Mehdi Hassan is now out at MSNBC. Uh, following the events of October 7th, he was sidelined for a week. They gave the excuse that they wanted to make room for up-to-the-minute news content as opposed to pre-scheduled anchored programs. And we kind of looked askance at that and like, what? And even if that's true, why is it a coincidence that you're taking off the Muslim anchors? Because it wasn't just Mehdi Hassan, it was Ali Velshi. He was off for a while, then they put him on that following Sunday. We thought, okay, maybe they're not taking the Muslims off the air, but it kind of seems like they are. They really slow-rolled this. Then a few weeks later, obviously, they took Mehdi Hassan's show away, but said they would keep him as a correspondent. Well, the final Mehdi Hassan show uh, aired um, earlier uh, this week, and Mehdi announced that with the cancellation of his show would come his departure from the network altogether. So here's Mehdi Hassan bidding farewell to the MSNBC audience. It's been an absolute blast doing this live show on MSNBC for the past three years with an amazing team of producers behind me and with all of you watching at home. It's been a privilege, it's been a pleasure. But as we begin 2024 with an election coming, a war still ongoing and too many Trump trials honestly to even keep track of. And with this show going away, I've decided that it's time for me to look for a new challenge. Tonight is not just my final episode of The Mehdi Hassan Show. It's my last day with MSNBC. Yes, I've decided to leave. To be clear, I am so proud, so, so proud of what we've achieved on this show, on this network. And I can't thank you all enough for tuning in and for your support and for your feedback. But as I say, new year, new plans. You can continue to follow me online at Mehdi R. Hassan on Instagram, on threads, and of course, Twitter or X. Where I'll give you updates on what's coming next for me. For now, from me, for one last time on this network, good night. That was tough to watch, man. I don't know what I'm going to do without him. <laughs> you know, you we should have done this one last, actually. Way. We should have done this one last because it's going to be hard to. It's going to be emotional. Pick ourselves up to get one. through the rest of this show. No, you know what? On the uh, on the video we did for Jimmy's, you do have some people in the comments there who are like, "He was a top notch journalist. How dare you?" So you know, I mean, he had his fans. He had his fans. Look, he was, he was capable doing of job. doing good work. There was a time he did back when he worked for The Intercept. He did a lot of great reporting and opining on the Israel-Palestine issue. As you can see from his interrogation of Mark Regev, which we played on the Jimmy Dore show and on our show a few weeks ago, we suspect that was the clip that got his show canceled. Um, he's He has talent. He's capable of doing good work. But even on the way out of MSNBC, he has to say, with all the Trump trials coming up, it's mm -hmm. a new year of all these all mm -hmm. these Trump trials that, what, you wouldn't get to cover on MSNBC? That's all they're going to be talking about. He has to keep in good standing with the MSNBC audience because those are the libs who are going to follow him wherever he goes next, to yeah. a podcast or a YouTube show or he's, he's wherever. Gonna like he yeah. can't even go out with dignity because he has to keep his audience with him and the lib audience does not tolerate any kind of conflict these are very conflict averse people right if he had dignity he would tell them fuck you you're obviously forcing me out because i am a pro palestine voice on a neocon basically never trump republican network msnbc is barely even a liberal network at this point it's a never trump republican network we were going to cover that they sidelined the muslim anchors but we weren't really clear as to what exactly was going on they did it in this right. very confusing right. way right and um you know he can't just tell them to go fuck themselves because he needs to keep their audience on board for whatever his next gig is at what point do you like i don't understand as someone who sits in front of a laptop now and does this for my computer a guy like Mehdi hassan even if he alienates 90 percent of his audience he could still set up shop doing what we're doing and make 10 times what we're making tomorrow very easily at what or, point do you have enough money to the point where you can just have a little spine and tell these people where to fucking go they obviously ran you, you out you know of town what? for very cynical reasons. Like, what is with people that they just can't? What is it because they overextend themselves when they get rich and now they have three mortgages to pay and, and five car yep. payments or whatever? Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I've, men- I, I've mentioned this before. There was this woman. It was it was a delightful memoir. You've never heard of her. Her name is Julia Phillips, and she came up in old Hollywood, like you know, oldish Hollywood, seventies Hollywood, eighties Hollywood. Um, you know, came up as a successful producer from like publishing and you know, just kind of fell into it. Didn't set out to be in that business. Um, and probably very much like Henry Hill had an interesting perspective on the mob because he wasn't of it. He wasn't right. from it. Um, she had a very interesting perspective on Hollywood. I never forgot that because she really painted this picture of, well, these people wind up spending all this money because everyone's looking at your status by what you have, where you live, what car you drive. So you're locked into this position where even to maintain your career, you have to project this impression of success because otherwise you look like a loser and then you get the loser stink on you. Right. So it's it's a vicious it's a hamster wheel. It's a vicious circle. So Medi can't be walking around and no fucking, you know, gap clothes. He's got to maintain those clothes if he wants to maintain his reputation. He wants to stay at his level of the game. But, yeah, it's a trap because you lose your freedom that way. You know, like now you now your nut is millions of dollars. Right. And and there are only so many gigs that pay that kind of money where you can have integrity like none. (laughs) <laughs> no, not, not in this business. No, nobody's you have paying to live you millions of dollars means. to have integrity doing this. You have to live below your means if you want right. the ability to tell powerful people to go fuck themselves. I mean, right. look what's happening to these people who are telling Bill Ackman to go fuck themselves. This guy's going after them one by one, ruining them. Yep. Right yep. now, that's not the end of the world if you're a millionaire who you know lives below his means to the point where you can lose three quarters of your income and still be comfortable. Uh, But I guess you get used to a certain lifestyle to the point where this all becomes very high stakes because, you know, I mean, this is, I mean, look, he has done some really despicable things. I thought the insinuations, I mean, look, as Matt Taibbi said when we interviewed him, all's fair in love and war. It's one thing you get the better of a guy in an interview. You're a hatchet man for the neoliberal, uh, you know, order. And so Matt Taibbi steps out of line and it's your job to embarrass him. Okay, it's one thing to embarrass him. It's another thing to insinuate that he perjured himself. Like that's crossing a fucking line when you start making up that people are guilty of crimes punishable by years in prison. Matt Taibbi is a husband and father of three. Like you don't go there. You don't go there. Like he takes it to a level of scumbaggery that is beyond the pale. So. Again, it's hard for me to sympathize with this guy. But on the other hand, these are your people being slaughtered and you got forced out of the supposed liberal forward thinking network for advocating for your people. You can't go out with a middle finger in the air. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I guess not. No, because he wants uh, I'm thinking through if he doesn't start his own shop where he could end up. You never know if he wants to do the integrity route. He could go back to Al Jazeera. I, I, that wouldn't shock me if he went back to Al Jazeera. Um, he, he talk TV is a very obvious place for him. <laughs> He'd be like an improvement he, he, over that one lady. He fits Julia, there, whatever like her a glove. name is, Hartley. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, he would, he would be the like overtly pro Palestine Piers Morgan over there. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, he would, he would, I, I, I'll be surprised if he sets up his own shop. He doesn't seem like the type. I, I no, think, he's I always he's gonna, that's true. He's always been a career. Yeah, he's be, he's always worked the system, right? Yeah, I, I he'll he'll land someplace. He'll 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 be fine. He's not going to make that MSNBC money. He'll never see that money again. But he'll he'll be fine. He'll be living a lot better than us. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Please clap. <laughs> 